Okay, let's just follow up then very quickly with some more of our body language ideas. Probably one of the key points in negotiation body language is going to be talking about eye contact. Eye contact. Eye contact, why is it so important? Because when you negotiate, you're going to be looking at each other, right? And that eye contact really is a way that humans try to understand, can I trust you? So if you look directly at the person you're negotiating with, they feel that you're being more honest than if you look away. They also feel you're being more serious. If you're not looking at a person directly with eye contact, they think maybe you're hiding something, you're not telling the truth, or you're not serious. Now, in our RPG, we're going to be using virtual avatars. But still, if your avatar is facing the other way and your back is to me and you're talking, uh, that makes me feel a little bit weird. If you can manipulate your avatar more, if you can really control your avatar to see the other person, to show the other person closely, to give some facial expression, which our program can do. And don't forget, they're looking at the computer screen, they're looking out of their avatar's eye, so they see you there. So the more you can maybe use your avatar to give expressions, to give body language, to be right in front of the person you're talking to, probably this will convey a feeling of you're telling the truth, you're serious. Whereas if your avatar is just far away or their back is to them and they're not, don't have good audio, then they're going to be maybe thinking you're not taking things serious. Of course, in person to person, we want to pay attention and not stare too long. In some cultures, it's actually bad habits to stare for a long time at someone and you don't want to stare like you're you know some kind of ghost or something staring makes people feel uncomfortable especially if there's no speaking or other body language try to make contact with the with another person on the other team this is always a good idea that when your team is negotiating with another team maybe your team has three people or four people and the other people other team has three or four or five people it's really a good idea if you can at least pick out one person on the other team that you communicate with well, that you give good body language signals to, and that person may begin to feel that you have some kind of connection, they understand you. That can help you in the future when you're trying to move forward in the negotiation, to have someone on the team that has some empathy towards you. By making eye contact with everyone, you tell them that you're serious. So you try to kind of pick up on one or two people in the group, but don't forget, don't just focus on one person. When you're speaking, make sure you speak to everyone. Because although you would like to make friends with one or two people, you also don't want to alienate or make someone else feel uncomfortable by not addressing everyone. So it's a little bit of a balance. Okay, let's take a little bit of a look at facial expressions. Things are, some things are really basic, like smiles and frowns are fairly universal across cultures, and this makes people feel comfortable if you have a nice smile, and if you have a frown, you look sad, this can make people look un feel uncomfortable. Make sure your facial expressions match the subject you're talking about. Now, this sounds so simple, this sounds so uh, basic, this sounds so easy, that it seems like you shouldn't even mention it. But in reality, it's not that easy. It's not that simple in my experience. And what this means is, or what I'm, the reason for this is, when you talk to people, you don't see yourself, you see them. So if you took a video camera, you filmed yourself, or if you looked in a mirror while you're talking, you may see something that's different than what you think you're projecting, than the way you think your facial expressions are uh, projecting out. So what I'm trying to say is you need to kind of think about it rather than just take it as granted. Just do it. You need to think about it. Am I smiling when I'm making this point? Am I giving the right frown when I need to? Am I, do, I, do I have a neutral face when I need to? Do I nod when it's the right time? We need to really think about it. And by thinking about it mentally, you kind of get a mental picture about it, which means you kind of practice it in your mind a little bit. Even more important is to use your facial expressions to send a message than just to make people feel comfortable, right? So in our negotiation, we're actually going to try to send a message. And if your facial expression sends the wrong message or is a little bit different, then this is really going to hurt you. 
And when I say different, I mean different from what you want the other side to receive, right? If you're trying to tell them, this is my lowest price, and it really is not your lowest price, then you're, you need to make your facial expression make the other side feel this really is your lowest price, you see? So that is not such an easy thing to do. You can use a surprise face, for example, to make the other side feel that the price is too high or too low, depending on if you're a buyer or a seller. So let's talk about that just for a second. Surprise, <gasps> that's, too, that's too much, we can't do that. You're asking for too much. Your disc, the, disc, the discount you want is, is too huge, there's no way. So that kind of surprise. But if you're really surprised, right? If somebody tells you a price and you're really surprised, the problem with being really surprised is that you give away some of your secret information, right? This is why it's so important before you negotiate, your team get together and look at what are your goals? What's your goal package? What's your resistance point? What's your target price? Because you need to get these together. And then you need to, in the negotiation, give those, like, surprise when somebody says something that is above or below, depending if you're buyer or seller, on what you are making them think is your target price, or what you are making them think is your resistance point. Begin with a relaxed and pleasant smile when you begin a negotiation. Being friendly at the start will help everybody feel a little bit more comfortable. You don't want to begin a negotiation with a lot of conflict or hostility because it's already going to be hard enough to move forward. Also, if you begin friendly, this may help the other side to begin more friendly and to move away from a tough position if they're planning to be tough or confrontational with you. A friendly face also hides your true plans, right? You don't want to give away plans through your facial expression. So by being friendly, it makes people a little bit feel more comfortable and does not give away any of your secret information. This kind of friendly, neutral phrase, not super happy, but just kind of neutral. This is what we call a poker face. And a poker face means like if you're playing poker cards, if you're playing cards, it, a poker face means a person cannot tell anything from your face. It's neutral. And not neutral like, like you're dead. But neutral more like, a mm -hmm. little bit of a smile, a little bit okay, relaxed, I, I'm hearing you, I'm feeling comfortable, I'm okay, you're okay, we're all okay. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell anything from what I'm saying. You can't tell any of my secret information from my face. Poker face. A person with a poker face is hard to read. This helps to keep your secret information secret. So keeping that poker face, just looking at your other uh, counterparts, giving them a nice nods and understanding, but not giving away your information. Okay, make your initial offer in a calm way. Lean forward, be friendly. You lean forward, I'm going to give you something, here's my offer. This approach kind of shows you're being honest, you're being friendly, and you're positive. You want to move forward. Try to speak clearly. Be careful not to talk too fast. When you speak fast, some people get confused, they may get something mixed up. You don't want to have a negotiation where the other side hears something you didn't say, where they get the numbers wrong, and then you're arguing over numbers that are not your real numbers. So speak slowly, clearly, wait as they listen. Maybe they'll nod and say, yes, I see. You can even slow down and say something. Does that make sense? Do you understand that? Our price is $22.50. $22.50. You got that? $22.50. Showing surprise when you hear the other side's counteroffer can can make the other side think that this is your resistance point. You're very close to the resistance point. That's what surprise does. These signals cannot go much further in the negotiation. It's saying, hey, I'm so surprised, we can't really move forward, right? 
Shocking. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Too high, too high. That, there's no way we can do that. Right? So that kind of surprise helps to convey that idea. Positive listening. Positive li listening, or what's called active listening, this means that you give feedback to the other side. You make the other side feel that you really are listening to them, that you really are understanding them. This is really key. When a negotiation is going well, the listener can appear positive, you can smile. Every couple sentences, you can nod your head as you're listening, and you can even repeat the point. So you can say something like, Oh, yes, I see. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, 22.50? Oh, right. Okay, and that can be shipped in one month, 30 days? Oh, okay, okay. So you be positive, you give the feedback, you repeat some points. Now, you may not be really listening because you already have your target. But what this does is it makes the other side feel that you really understand them and then when you give your counter offer or you say that something is not possible or it's past your resistance point, they're more likely to believe you're telling the truth. Because you were active listening, you understood them. Because what's going to happen is when you first offer your counter offer, the other side is going to accuse you of not understanding their main point. They're going to say, hey, you didn't really understand what I offered. When the negotiation is going, is going well, the listener can appear positive and every couple sentences, nod your head, repeat the point. When the negotiation is not going very well, the listener can be negative in order to signal that you don't agree with this. And some ways you can do this is closing the eyes a little bit, leaning back some. Use the hands in front of the face as if you're thinking or uh, kind of feeling some kind of problem, looking distracted. So this would be into the negotiation a little bit and then we're talking for some time. Maybe we have an uh, offer, counter offer, another offer, another counter offer. And then I begin to say, ah, oh. you see, so I'm signaling you. I don't know, this is not possible, this, I don't think so, no, I don't know, mm -mm. you see, so at the beginning I'm positive, I'm listening, I understand you, now we make some progress and then I'm signaling you, this is my resistance point, this is my resistance point, that's the kind of signal I want to give you. If the negotiator does not want to look either positive or negative, then you just use the poker face, right? and this kind of hides everything. Don't look positive, don't look negative, that's the poker face. Just look straight ahead, keep your eyes open, maybe give a few nods. The hands can be put together in front of the face as if you're thinking or contemplating, right? Contemplating or thinking like something like this. No clue, do I agree, disagree, right? But that also means you cannot show surprise. And when you show surprise, you're signaling resistance points. So poker face is good sometimes, but not all the time, right? Because you do want to kind of lead the other side to believe something. Now, how can you uh, kind of develop these expressions? Well, you can practice them. And good negotiators understand their own body language, their own facial expressions. Now, one way you can do this is just practice it in a mirror, of course. So you go in front of a mirror and you practice your facial expressions. You, you practice them with some of the phrases that we've learned in this part and other parts. So for example, a positive reaction can be used when you want to signal the other side you agree with something or they change into a direction you agree with. So you can be positive. You can be serious meaning that you show that this is something you're listening to or the point you are making is in fact very serious. So you look ahead, a little bit stern, not looking too happy, but look, leaning forward and saying this is an important point. Surprise is you use when you want to signal you're getting near my resistance point or if something has changed 
and you don't like the direction it's going in, you can act surprised. You pull back a little bit, take your breath in, have a little bit of a shocking uh, reaction. When you want to be negative, negative is usually a reaction that shows you're shocked at the other side. There's something that the other side's done that you don't agree with, and I'm going to withdraw from the negotiation very soon. So this negative approach signals the other side you're near your resistance point. Negative emphasis is used to reinforce the information is, is not being accepted, the spoken information you don't agree with. It has a negative meaning. So you kind of give more of a frown, your eyes may be more open as you stare ahead, and you don't look very happy about things. Also, you need to think about it, so you lean back, maybe close your eyes, maybe uh, be quiet for a little while, and close your mouth and you're thinking about it, staring off into space or into your mind. And this shows that you're thinking about it very seriously, but you're not agreeing with it. It may be a problem, it may be difficult. Now, if you look away or you lean very far back or you look at other things like a computer or a tablet or a book or a paper, this is showing that I'm not really interested and I may withdraw from the negotiation. You're not giving me anything I'm interested in, so you're looking away. What about hand movements? Hand movements can be very helpful also. I think actually hand movements we often use when we talk about things like decline, increases, this is all we can offer you. There's nothing more I can do. I'm, I'm stuck. I have to talk to my boss before I can give you anything. Effective use of the hands is key, but you don't want to go overboard, right? You don't want to be waving your hands all over the place. Even more important is this idea that you need to probably control your hands. That means that we're often using our hands. Sometimes we're holding our hands in tight here, we're putting them in our pocket down here, we're putting them under the desk, we're putting them up here. The position of your hands can give away a lot of information. So to control that, you want to actively think, what are my hands doing that make my point to the other side, that make the other side or help the other side believe what I'm saying is true, right? We cannot accept this price because your sales have been going down. How do you compare that to, we can't accept this price your sales have been going down. See that leaning forward, the hand gestures make you feel that what I'm saying is really what I believe. So hand gestures are something that maybe you cannot make the other side believe something is not true, but at least you must control your hand gestures because if you're not careful, they will give away or signal your secret information and you don't even know it. When the hands are pulled back and placed near the body or in the pockets or under the table, usually that's negative. And it may also show that you're not really telling the truth. Okay, I think that uh, covers up uh, pretty well right there. Let me get some of our stuff here. So what I'd like to do is, very quickly, I'm going to just sum this up, right? So this eight parts we've covered and we began not really knowing anything about negotiation and we talked about finding out what are your goals, how to measure success or failure in a negotiation. And negotiation is not just about always getting the lowest price no matter what. Rather it's thinking about what is you want, what's your goal package, how to prioritize, then how to make a plan and how to select a strategy, then how to execute tactics to obtain your, to implement your strategy and obtain your goal package, right? So all of this, the most important thing is get ready beforehand. Talk with your team, work with your team. Make sure everybody on your team understands the goal package, the resistance point, the target prices. If everybody understands these things and what you're going to convey to the other side, then you have a unified team, much more likely to succeed especially if your team needs to spread out and talk to different buyers or different sellers at the same time because you have some time pressure, like what will happen 
in our RPG game. And then we get down to the really practical stuff. You know, what are the actual words you say? What are the sentences you say? The phrases you say? We've studied that. And then what's the body language you actually use? We've looked at that. All of these things come together in negotiation. And I think the best lesson to take away is that if you come into a negotiation unprepared, thinking you're just going to wing it, most people will not succeed. You will be badly beaten by the other side. And you probably won't even know it because the other side will make you feel, make you think that what you're getting is already at their resistance point. They're already losing money. They're doing bad. They're giving you so much already and you feel good and you feel you've done a good job. But actually, they're the ones that have done a good job and you've lost. I want to emphasize this idea of the other side will always try to make you think they're doing you a favor. They're trying to help you. They're trying to work with you. They're trying to integrate in their strategy. But in reality, they may actually be using a distributive approach. They're trying to get more from you under the idea they want to give up less. Everything that you give up, they feel is a, is a win for them. And everything they give up would be a loss for them. So. Although it's wonderful and lovely to think that we can have this integrative negotiation, what's the problem with that? If you're practicing integrative and the other side is practicing distributive, you will be on the short end. You will be losing. So good luck with your negotiation. Take them serious. Plan beforehand. Get your goals. Think of your strategy all the way down to your tactics, all the way down to your body language, all the way down to the way you dress and the way you look. And in that way, push everything forward and be conscious about it in your negotiation. And then you're much more likely to win, especially if the other side is not as prepared as you are. So good luck in your negotiation.